Hello, welcome to this video guide of the steps of the research process. The purpose of this video is to make sure our researchers all have the same foundational understanding of how to conduct research. Before beginning an independent research project, it's important to know that as scientists, we follow a specific set of steps. In this video, we outline a framework to guide your research here on the SMART. In a different video, you'll get to hear about some real experiences of SMART researchers. For now, though, we'll focus on the basic concepts and steps. Let's go through each step now. The first step is identifying a research topic. That means finding a general topic area that interests you. Often this topic area is a problem of some sort. There are a number of ways you might choose a topic. Observe others around you. Observe the media. Think about research studies you've read about. What's a question or problem you might see and like to know more about? Ask yourself, what might be a new question you should ask? An example might be, what is the state of literature regarding alcohol displays on Facebook? Wow, that description was so helpful. I certainly don't need to do any more research to understand it. The second step is a review of the literature where you familiarize yourself with published studies on your topic. This starts with developing a plan for which databases and search terms to use. For example, if you're planning on studying something education related, you may begin your search with a research database like ERIC, which stands for the Educational Research Information Center. Since your topic is health related, you'll begin with PubMed. You'll begin by asking yourself, what is the state of the literature related to Facebook alcohol displays? Keep a keen eye out for what might be missing in the literature related to your topic of interest. The gap you find may not be what you expected, but there's no doubt one out there. If there's no gap, that means we already know everything, and that's probably not going to be true for a while. It's also important to note that your literature review may not encompass all the literature related to your topic. In fact, you may not know everything related to college alcohol use before you finish. But before you move on, you'll need to know if anyone has already answered your research question. Gee, that discussion of finding a gap in literature sure didn't leave any gaps in my understanding. Now you're ready to develop and refine your research question. You may take this time to share what you've learned and bounce ideas around with a mentor or peer. By this point, you may realize you need a slightly different research question because yours is already addressed in the literature. Maybe you noticed there was a gap in the literature regarding alcohol displays on Twitter. This is where you get specific. Now you're going to zero in on the research gap you'll base your study on. Your new research question may become, what proportion of college students display alcohol references on Twitter? At this point, it is very important to assess for both feasibility and significance of your research question. You might ask, do I have the resources and skills to complete this? And when I do complete this, is there someone who would benefit from this? If your question was about the proportion of college students referencing 30 Rock on Twitter. That's a really interesting question. But if you can't think of who would benefit from knowing the answer to it, maybe it's time to consider a different gap in the literature to address. Golly, that explanation was as refined as a good research question. The next step is to develop your data collection plan. Developing a survey can be a really fun step, but it's important to recognize that your methods should be developed expressly for the purpose of answering your research question. So this step should come after the development and clarification of the research question. This is the step where you'll need to set a plan regarding who you'll sample, how many participants you'll need, how you'll recruit those participants, and what incentives participants can expect, what kind of data collection method will be appropriate, and what analyses you'll conduct once you've gathered the data. In order to answer the question of how many college students reference alcohol on Twitter, you may want to do a content analysis of 100 UW students who are identified through registrar lists and recruited through email and phone contacts. You might offer gift cards as incentives. You may follow participants on Twitter profiles. Sheesh! These insights were as clear as a good data collection plan. Next, you'll prepare your data collection plan and actually collect the data. This is when you obtain approval from an Institutional Review Board, or an IRB. Once approved, you can actually collect the data. 
This is the exciting action step where you get to recruit your participants and conduct interviews, focus groups, content analysis, or whatever data collection method you've chosen. It is important to make participant confidentiality and privacy a priority as you begin to collect your data. That was as exciting as and thorough as data collection itself. The next step is to analyze and interpret the data. At this point, you want to understand the data and find the answer to your research question. In some cases, this will involve a statistical test. In other cases, you'll bring in someone else to help you with a qualitative project. If you don't know much about statistics, don't fear. We are seldom alone at this point, as data analysis is almost always a team effort. Afterward, you interpret the data. This means drawing a conclusion about the real world based on your data and bringing the numbers to life. At this point, you may be noticing how important it is to follow these steps in order. It can be exciting to learn a new method of data collection, but it's important to know at the outset why you want to collect a given set of data. This way, when you're at the interpretation phase, you have a research question to guide the interpretation of your results, and you know why they're significant. Well, my interpretation is that was extremely helpful advice. Last but not least, you'll disseminate your findings or get them out into the public. You might pick a scholarly journal that seems like a good fit for your project and write a research article. You might pick a conference with a relevant mission and present your findings there. Are there any organizations in the community that might benefit from this information? It's also important to think about translation. How does this apply to the real world? How can you share your findings with not just other researchers, but with people who will benefit from the information you've uncovered? Now you may think about how this new knowledge can be built upon. If I can disseminate my findings as well as you just disseminated instructions about how to complete this step, I shouldn't have any problems. And of course, once you disseminate your research, you can start this process again. Unless you had a really exceptional research question, and now that it's answered you actually do know everything, there's more work to be done. We hope after watching this video, you understand the basic principles of the scientific process. This is just a general overview which hopefully inspired several new questions. Please feel free to follow up with a team member as you embark on this exciting new adventure in research. Created using Powtoon.